Yeah, good afternoon all. I'm Sneha Lata from the FOSI team. So on behalf of the FOSI team, I welcome you all uh, to this presentation on web-based resources for teaching and learning chemistry, part two. Molecular visualization and spectroscopy for organic chemistry by Professor Robert Hansen. So many of you have already uh, attended the part one last week. And this week is the second one on organic chemistry. And uh, Professor Hansen is already here uh, in the meeting. So actually for him, it's uh, morning 5.30 a.m. So uh, I have to wish him good morning actually for him. And he'll be formally introduced by Professor Kanan Maudgalia, who is the PI of the project. And he'll join the meeting in a short while. So I'll just go through some general instructions. So most of you have attended the last time uh, uh, seminar and it's a repetition for you all. But uh, there are some new uh, attendees here. So for the benefit of them, I'll go through the general instructions once again. So kindly keep your mic on mute throughout the presentation. If you have any query, please post it in the chat window. So for C team members, we'll answer them. And uh, please post only the relevant uh, queries. Uh, please don't spam the chat window with uh, uh, so a lot of unnecessary things uh, so that we don't lose the necessary information. So that's why I'm uh, saying that. Uh, the presentation by Professor Hansen will be for approximately 50 minutes. Uh, kindly post your questions in the chat window. Uh, Professor Hansen will answer them during the discussion and interaction session. You can also send an email to eoutreach or contact hyphen soul. Uh, we'll answer them. Actually, for this time, uh, we have introduced a 30 minute breakout session after the presentation. So all of you interested can take part in this session. You will be uh, given a choice of eight uh, breakout rooms. And then uh, uh, regarding the breakout rooms, uh, I will uh, talk further uh, after the presentation. Uh, so, and the link for the slides, uh, whatever uh, is presented today, will be shared with you in your registered email ID after the webinar. And uh, your feedback is very important. So, the link for the feedback form is already given in your guideline email. So, if you check your guideline email, you will find the link. So you can uh, fill in the feedback form and submit after the seminar. That will be enabled only after the seminar, the link. So uh, regarding the breakout sessions, I will talk later after the... So I'll skip those slides. So regarding the seminar, uh, uh, this webinar series. So the last time we had the webinar one, which was on general and inorganic chemistry. Professor Hansen discussed a lot of websites uh, with a lot of examples about Lewis structures, atomic orbitals, molecular shapes, kinetics, point groups, and crystal structure. And today, he'll be talking about organic chemistry, web-based resources of 3D organic structures, conformations of organic compounds, stereochemistry, and isomerism, NMR spectroscopy in relation to chemical structure, organic reactions and molecular orbitals. So uh, these, all these examples, he'll be uh, giving uh, these, uh, whatever is, uh, whatever all the examples are all are aligned uh, with the NCERT syllabus uh, from chemistry classes 11 and 12. So in the today's webinar, the Examples are mostly taken from the NCRT textbooks of class 11 and 12, and specifically to promote understanding of basic principles in chemistry while retaining the excitement in the chemistry, develop an interest in students to study chemistry as a discipline, develop problem solving skills and nurture curios curiosity, aesthetic sense and creativity. So you might all recognize these books. These are the covers of chemistry textbooks, part one, part two, class 11 and 12. So mostly uh, the examples are taken from these books. And today, uh, Professor Hansen will cover the following chapters. We'll cover structure of atom, chemical bonding and molecular structure uh, from 11, uh, class 11 and class 11, again, organic chemistry 
and hydrocarbons. And from class 12, you need one solid state. Uh, class 12, you need four chemical kinetics. And class 12, you need 10 to 13 organic compounds. Uh, so, apart from uh, covering the examples from the 11th, class 11th and 12 NCRT textbook, he'll go a little further. So, he'll explain uh, slightly uh, elevated examples from uh, detailed examples from conformational analysis, uh, stereochemistry, RNS descriptors, then NMR spectroscopy. Although we all know that uh, class 11 and 12, they don't study uh, any NMR spectroscopy, but uh, and at undergraduate level, definitely uh, it's there in the syllabus and uh, point group symmetry. Uh, so if you, uh, any one of you want to get involved uh, in creating the web pages or uh, wanting to know more uh, or learn more, uh, send an email to contact hyphen soul at forc.in and uh, uh, we can definitely do that together. Okay, I think I'll stop here. So if uh, Professor Kannan is already here, then you know we can. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, I just finished uh, talking about the general instructions. I think you can take over now. Yes, um, good afternoon or good morning, uh, Bob, and good morning, uh, Professor uh, Robert Hansen. Um, good afternoon to all the uh, participants. Uh, there are about 150 people, and I think the number will increase if I'm not mistaken, based on the past experience. I'll give a brief mm -hmm. overview of the FOSSI project, and then I will uh, give a short introduction to uh, Professor Hansen, before he can begin. I'm visiting Delhi. I wasn't sure whether I would be able to join because I have to go and catch a flight and it is raining heavily. But uh, I'm uh, being able to find time. So here is uh, our uh, POSI website. And um, we start with our uh, quote of our former president, beloved uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam, who talks about how open source is very important to a country like ours, right? And uh, you can see the software that we promote. Um, by the way, how do you locate this website? See this logo, FOSSE, F-O-S-S-E-E dot I-N, FOSSE dot I-N. FOSSE stands for Free and Open Source Software for Education. Uh, we promote Scilab, which is an open source alternative to MATLAB. Then we have Python. We have eSIM, electronic circuit design. We have OSDAG, which is for civil engineers. DWSIM for chemical engineers. Open Foam for computational fluid mechanics. Open Modelica for modeling. Programmable logical control. Arduino you would have heard of. Then let me go to R which is an alternative to SPSS. Then we have um, QGIS, which is a GIS software. This is a, a focal, is a, a software, uh, it's a collection of software packages for uh, uh, graphics and animation. Finally, we come to SOL. SOL is uh, what we are looking at. It is science open source software for teaching and learning. Uh, it's a collection of ICT software that can be used as a teaching learning tool by uh, the community of educators. Okay, So if I click that, it will take me to the next page where you will see uh, various things that are available. For example, the software that we are focusing on are Chem Collective Virtual Lab. And then we have JMOL. JMOL is uh, what uh, uh, JMOL has been developed by Professor Robert Hansen, uh, who's the speaker for today. And then we have free play and GeoGebra. We have actually many other things also, but uh, these are certainly available. And if you see here, there is a link here on the left hand side, science and concept map projects. If you click this, then what it says, it gives a brief explanation. Then it says, how does one participate in this? What is the procedure? How does one do the submission? So I can click this. It'll give the procedure. 
procedure for project submission. Then we have a page that says submission guidelines and then proposal form and so on. These are the completed projects. You can see that there are three that have been completed and there could be some ongoing. So we have four that are ongoing and you can see that these are from different colleges. Okay, one is from Sophia College, another one uh, ISER, Kolkata, NSS College of Engineering, Palakkad, then IIT Bombay, we have one more. So it is possible for all of you to contribute. We welcome uh, contributions from all science teachers in general and chemistry teachers in particular. So with that uh, brief introduction, by the way, uh, FOSI project is funded by the National Mission on Education through ICT, Ministry of Education, Government of India. We are grateful to them for supporting us. And when we have money, we pay honorarium to all the contributors. Now, I'll, it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Robert Hansen. Um, he has been a professor of chemistry at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota in the USA since 1986. He received his bachelor's at Caltech, PhD in Columbia, all in chemistry. He did a postdoc at MIT for two years. Professor Hansen has received several awards, Fulbright Specialist Grant from the US government, NSF Presidential Young Investigator Award, NIH National Institutes of Health Research Service Award, NSF Postdoctoral Fellowship Award. Um, I am listing some of them. He has uh, many more awards. He has the patent for the Sharpless Asymmetric Epoxidation, a widely used method in organic synthesis. He has published widely in the areas of chem informatics, bioinformatics, computational material science, and chemistry and physics education. He is the author of two books, Molecular Origami, Precision Scale Models from Paper, and the second book, Introduction to Molecular Thermodynamics. Professor Hansen is the principal developer of JMOL. I mentioned JMOL. Um, as you know, we have a lot of spoken tutorials on JMOL. In the page that I showed, there are links available to all, access all of them. Uh, Professor Hansen is the principal developer of JMOL, an open source project dedicated to interactive molecular visualization and analysis. It is possible for you to create um, um, a molecule, its uh, animation and so on, and package it in a way which is easy to do using his software. And you can share it across and anybody can use it. It's an amazing thing that Professor Hansen has come up with. So all through JMOL, he is the sole proprietor of integrated graphics, specializing in the design and implementation of interactive molecular graphics for education and research. Professor Hansen is the chair of the UPAC Fair Spec project, currently developing a standard for the FAIR, which is an acronym findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable management of, fair management of spectroscopic data in chemistry. Uh, Professor Hansen um, was with us in the month of July. We, are, uh, we were really uh, delighted to have him. And then he worked, um, what should I say? He worked more than 24 hours a day. And um, he kept uh, Snehalata busy. And uh, of course, it's a pleasure because, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a learning every day, every hour, every minute. And uh, Dr. Snehalata uh, Kaliyapan um, really enjoyed it. By the way, I forgot to tell about uh, Dr. Snehalata. It's a great opportunity to talk about her. Dr. Snehalata Kaliyapan leads our science project. Uh, she has a PhD in chemistry. She has several years of experience. I'm happy that um, it is through her. We were able to uh, uh, you know, get all the paperwork done so that uh, Professor Hansen could actually visit uh, IIT Bombay. There, was, uh, at one, there were question marks, um, at least occasionally, let me put it this way, mildly, uh, whether he would make it. Fortunately, because he had a narrow window, he had to um, come teach, um, come and be with us, and then go back. Um, for his own teaching uh, in Minnesota. 
fortunately everything fell into places into place and then we could do this so uh, it's um, i'm happy that the number is still going up it's uh, 168 and there'll be i guess uh, some more people who will join um, so we look forward to professor hansen's uh, uh, presentation uh, i'm sorry i will have to leave if i have to catch the flight and return to mumbai uh, tonight um so i'm going to leave but um like last time i was there till the end last time um the talk goes on till about 5 o'clock and he gives ample time for discussions and i want all of you to stay behind and ask your questions not only should you ask questions please also listen to the answers that he may give for questions of other people there are many exciting uh, questions and he has also promised to be available and to answer other questions that cannot be accommodated now and uh, it's a it's a uh, you know fantastic opportunity for all the chemistry teachers i'm really happy that uh, the fosi could organize this fosi iit bombay could organize professor hansen stock uh bob power to you Thank you very much uh Professor Cannon for such a nice introduction. Uh I will say that for me it was every hour, every minute, every day uh learning as well coming to IIT Bombay. So what a what a terrific experience and it's so wonderful to be able to continue this in this way and share so much with people across India. This is just is a total thrill for me. Uh I'm going to share my screen and uh give you a little little uh, background about the various uh pieces of software the the websites that we're going to look at today i want to say that this these are just a very small selection uh to get you started get you interested in this uh there are, we'll send you links and you can google uh jmol jmol and find all sorts of really interesting pages out there but we hope that you'll walk away from this uh this afternoon with um an appreciation for what you can use in the classroom and I'll be trying to show you a few ways that I I would use them as well I've used all of these in my classes in various points I, I teach organic chemistry right now I've taught first year chemistry as well and um uh, and it's just been pretty much uh I developed things that I could use in classroom so I hope you can use them too and and uh enjoy this. Okay, so uh first of all, uh welcome uh I'm I'm speaking to you from halfway around the world here in Minnesota, uh southern Minnesota, central United States, not too far from Canada. Uh it does get snowy around here, but it's beautiful right now. It's late summer, early fall, some of our most beautiful weather uh that we could possibly imagine around here. Trees are all starting to turn. I'm going to talk about some services, uh some some digital services, some databases that exist in the world and we've been able to leverage and uh two of these uh, National Cancer Institute and PubChem uh deliver molecules that you can use in your classroom, three-dimensional molecules and information about them. and then a couple that you wouldn't know about probably but the EPFL uh National Institute in Switzerland in Lausanne has a server that can provide NMR spectra uh predicted spectra in collaboration with a university in Lisbon Portugal so this is really a worldwide endeavor and and it's an exciting time to be able to study chemistry and use these tools Hi. that are so available now and uh before but before I go any further let me point out that a few of these things that we're studying uh, that we're going to look at today um do depend on other servers and occasionally those servers are down so we have to be able to accommodate that a little bit uh Deepak can you be sure that people are muted just click on them when you see them unmuted and mute them please thank you okay so I'm going to start out with a very simple page. We're not going to do a breakout room on it. I think it's going to be pretty pretty obvious. Uh I know that in uh in class 11 and 12 you we talk about 
alkane nomenclature. And these are just a couple of very, very simple pages. There's nothing to them really, uh, but I've used them very effectively. I've enjoyed using them in class and I thought I'd share them with you just on naming alkanes. And then we'll go from there into uh, eight pages, uh, some of which are pretty simple. And uh, the ones toward the end are very sophisticated websites that integrate all of this business in one way or another. So you'll see this range of websites. Before I go any further, let me point out that JMall and this whole business is community driven, meaning we do this all because people come up with ideas, suggest ideas, wanna get involved. Uh, it is actually not too hard to make web pages yourself. And we would really encourage you if you have that interest or you have students who have some kind of interest in that um, to get in touch with Fossey and let's see what we can put together for some, some uh, training on how to actually put these pages together. They really are not that hard. People do this all over the world. Okay, so let's start out with just a couple very, very simple pages uh, on alkanes. Um, we're starting to learn alkanes in, in the classroom and we want students to be able to name them. And so here is a really, really simple page. All it does is show us a molecule and say, can you name that? And however long that takes us to figure out how to do that. Uh, but, and whenever the student's ready, they can say, okay, tell me what it is for propyl decane. And uh, it shows the longest chain here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, carbons, and then off the one, two, three, fourth carbon is a three carbon chain. And so that's all it is. <laughs> There's nothing more than that. He says, you do this all, all as many times as you want and name it. And then the analysis button actually kind of points out that some of these chains are too short. Oh, there, that's the good one. That's too short. That's too short. That's too short. But here's the one that we want to use for the naming. That's it. Uh, okay, so uh, associated with that is another page that is almost the same, except what it does is it presents two of them and it asks the student to tell us if they're the same or not. So this is just a little study in following those chains and seeing if we've got the same thing. It's a little game and I'm gonna say they're different and I guess I was right. Um, and we could do that until our heart's content and see I think they're the same, there we go. I don't know about this one. Oh, I'm getting them all right here, I'm guessing. I don't know why that's wrong. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> you can have some fun with those pages. Uh, that's, that's all I'm gonna say about those. Now, a uh, little bit more sophisticated pages. I think uh, many of us have seen this sort of diagram in a book of the conformations of butane, uh, getting the names uh, sin and anti and uh, uh, eclipsed and what are these names? And so this page allows us to do that in 3D. And I'm gonna turn off this animation here for a second. Uh, basically on the right, we have the diagram and on the left, we have the molecule in its rotational states. So it's a very easy to have a discussion with students in the classroom and point to various points. And you know, why is this one way up here in such a high energy? Well, especially if we look at this with the van der Waals, we can see, oh my goodness, look at this overlap here, this problem with these two methyl groups that are banging into each other. Uh, in that eclipse, that's got to be high energy. And then if we look over here to the very lowest energy, of course, that's the, the anti-configuration there where the methyls are as far away as possible. And we can explore these different points along the way and talk about them. As you can see, these websites that I'm showing you, are uh, many of these are just very straightforward, very specific kind of websites that do a specific thing. And uh, 
here's another one. Okay, now this one is actually one more level of sophistication. Uh, it's a model viewer and builder. So this website that we're going to look at can pull in molecules from these various servers that I've talked about and display them in 3D. And it also has a um, special discussion of cyclohexane ring flip. Now I know uh, that's a little bit beyond uh, 11, 12, but there are also, I know some uh, faculty from colleges here and um, in, at the college level, we certainly talk about cyclohexane conformation. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that, spend a little bit more time on this uh, web page. So the basic idea here is that say you have an interest in talking about some particular molecule, for whatever reason, I am interested in uh, Tylenol, which is the US name for paracetamol. Here we instantly can have a three-dimensional model of that. Um, what is uh, cholesterol? Oh, it's this, these steroid ring system, usually drawn more like this with a couple of methyl groups in a chain. Uh, we have two options here for uh, sources of these molecules. One is the National Cancer Institute in, near Washington, DC in the United States. And the other is PubChem also in that area. And I wanna just say a little bit about the difference here. PubChem will uh, give you molecules based on name and, and for example, 2-hydroxybutane. Uh, they have millions of molecules and it's probably gonna be in there. But you know, um, if I were to spell that pronounce, if I had the wrong number here, 3-hydroxybutane, if you're thinking organic chemistry, you know that doesn't exist, does it? Because I've got the numbering wrong and PubChem will say, I'm sorry, we didn't find that molecule because it doesn't exist as by that name. But here's the cool thing, the National Cancer Institute site, if I do this, will actually come up with a molecule because they don't care if the molecule exists or not, they are producing a model for you based on what you have given them. And so uh, this could be anything and they will come up with a molecule. Now, uh, basically I wanna point out that what I'm doing right now is just giving you a hint of what these do. And the idea of the breakout rooms is that uh, you can go to the breakout rooms after we talk, I hope you stay for the breakout rooms and look around and, and hopefully someone will share their screen and you can play as a group and discuss any of these uh, websites this, this, uh, this afternoon. Okay, so uh, let's see, I wanna show you a couple other things that you can do with this because they're pretty uh, unusual. So if I said one, two, dimethyl cyclohexane, here, no surprise there. Now, you know, I, it, it really actually, even for me, it's just startling for me how fast that can be that I just went to a, a server and they got this molecule for me and brought it back essentially instantaneously. I hope in India you have uh, as good responses as I have here. Um, but you can see this is uh, one, two dimethyl cyclohexane and this is the trans configuration here. But let's say I wasn't so much interested in the trans, I wanted the cis. I wanna talk about the difference between trans and cis and equatorial and axial. And uh, there's a little option over here called drag minimize, which is a really interesting little thing. When you click that on, now when I take an atom, it will actually take that atom and move it around. And if I do it just right, there we go, look at that. I, I brought it over to the other side of the ring. Oh, it even went into kind of a boat conformation here when it did that. 
but I can fix that. I can just bring this atom down here and play, pull it a little bit. And uh, my experience with this is this is rather addictive. You could spend a lot of time just having a lot of fun playing with molecules because your model kit now has all this flexibility that you can do it. And now we can see here that in the cis conformation, this methyl group is axial. And if I did a space fill, we'd see, whoa, that is really sticking up there very close to these other atoms here. And uh, we can talk about that in class. You can also uh, do little minimizations on the structure. I might not do much at all because I just minimized it uh, to tune up a structure as well. And uh, if you use this model kit mode, you can click that. You see this little menu show up right up here. And I'm sorry, the images aren't there, but this is the atom uh, one. And if I go down to oxygen, now, for example, I could turn that methyl group into an oxygen, or I could add an oxygen <coughs> onto the ring. And so you can also build the molecules quite easily. Another thing that this uh, website has is uh, this uh, show hide MEP, and that stands for molecular electrostatic potential. If you teach organic chemistry, you may have seen this sort of view where you have colorations uh, based on the electron density, the, the, the charge states of those atoms. And this is how we emphasize in organic chemistry where the reactions are gonna occur because here we have this high electron density around the oxygens. And so that's where uh, protons, for example, are gonna show up and, and uh, protonate right there. And you can see this blue around this hydrogen is indicating that it's lost some of its electron density to the oxygen and is partially positive. And again, that would be where the molecule is acidic and loses its proton. One other thing I wanna point out uh, is that you can in fact save these views. So uh, it's particularly this save the PNG. PNG is an image file format, but this is a very special PNG. Let me show you. I'm gonna save this now. Okay, and you see a little download here that happened. And now I'm gonna go ahead and, and load that other molecule and talk about that. But here's the deal. If you do that, if you do this before class and you get this set up the way you want it, you can just drag these. Let's see, I think I have to go to the actual page maybe. Uh, like you can drag these back into JMOL and it will reproduce pretty much exactly what you had before. So this is, a, this is a very useful tool in the sense that once you have gotten something the way you want it, when you save it, you can bring it back to exactly the state that you had it. You can prepare these before class and then have them exactly the way you want them when you come back. Okay, so that was uh, our number two Model Builder Viewer website. Here's another little site. Uh, now, that was three-dimensional molecules. And we can certainly uh, have lots of use for three-dimensional molecules. But one of the things we do in our organic chemistry, which is really helpful, is we do a lot of drawing in 2D. So we might have a molecule like this and we draw it. But then we want students to be able to think about that in 3D and we wanna think about the implications, for example, of these two OHs on the, on the same side of the ring. Well, how does that work? And so when we click this, we can convert the 2D model into a 3D model. And uh, that's what this website does. Um, it also happens to show RNS. So if you're talking about stereochemistry, you can quickly uh, test or quiz or discuss uh, the nomenclature for, the, for naming these, these uh, designators, these stereochemical descriptors around the molecule. And it goes both ways. 
So, for example, if I said uh, paracetamol, I hope that I'm spelling that right. Yeah, looks like it. Then over here, it comes in in 3D, but then we can use that same service to show us what the structure would be, how it would be drawn in 2D as well. Very simple page and what it does, that's what it does. It lets you draw in 2D and see the structures in 3D. And if you go to that breakout room, you can play with this a little bit with others and discuss it and, and see how that goes for you. Okay, uh, another one is the stereochemical assigner. And this is, you'll see a very similar theme here. I basically take web pages and adapt them for new uses as I go. This one is just tuned a little bit toward stereochemistry so that we can use the wedges, for example, here. Put a few interesting things over here and bring that 2D into 3D. There's the structure. And I could ask the question, okay, at this center right here, uh, students, is this uh, R or S? And uh, you might know that we wanna put the H in the back and then go around the ring. And in this case, we would have priority one for the O, priority two for the carbon with the oxygen nearby, priority three for the carbon with carbon nearby, no oxygen. And so that would be one, two, three. And I believe that's gonna be R. And let's see, indeed, it is R. And so this is a tool that you can interactively use. Your students can interactively use to uh, study a little bit about uh, stereochemistry. Now, this one also has a button, toggle select invert center. And so when I click on this, if I pick an atom now, it's going to invert it. So let's see, how about this one? All right, switching from R to S, switching from S to R like this, all around the molecule. There you go. So uh, there's, there's some really nice little aspects here. I'm going to invert all the chirality. Whoop, and now I have every one of them flipped. Every one went, went reversed. And again, here you can save the PNG and bring it back exactly the way you left it. Okay, um, number five is NMR. And uh, many of us, uh, as, at least at the college level, are doing uh, spectroscopy with students, teaching organic students about NMR spectroscopy and IR spectroscopy. And this little page is pretty amazing. So here in this case, we might think of a molecule that we're interested in. such as this, and we're interested in the NMR spectrum. Now, this one you have to wait a little while for sometimes because uh, that is going through quite the little world circuit of electric energy. It's uh, going to Lausanne, Switzerland to pick up the NMR spectrum. It's going to Washington, D.C. in the United States to pick up this uh, three-dimensional model. And Lasan is going to Portugal to get the data that it's using to display the spectrum. This is not the actual spectrum. This is a predicted spectrum. Uh, but I just wanna show you a few things, how you use this, uh, if in case you're interested in this and you wanna go to that breakout room. So uh, first thing to note is that on the right-hand side, you can go up and down scaling wise. And uh, the dot in the middle here brings you back. So whatever you do, no matter how you scale this, the dot in the middle is home. Secondly, if you want to zoom in, just drag a little bit through one of the sections you're interested in, and it will zoom in on that. So we can see some of those splittings, for example. You see these little red tabs up at the top, and those are the identified peaks. So in this 
if I were to click on the spectrum at a certain place, you can see on the 2D structure and the 3D structure, the highlight of that atom uh, that's causing that signal. And you can see here, in this case, the 7.2, it's a doublet pretty much. And that's because this hydrogen is next to a carbon with one hydrogen. Who's this, who's this guy way out here at 7.9? What's so special about that aromatic signal that it would be so far out of the others? Well, don't you know? That's the one next to the carbonyl group. And the carbonyl group is driving that one all the way down to around eight. Now here's the fun part. Uh, we don't have to just use this model. So, so now I could say, well, okay, that's fine. But I, I'd like to know what happens if I add a chlorine. And now we can get that spectrum. And again, we'll wait a second, there we go. And it's gonna show both. So this top, one on the top, that's the one I was just looking at. And now if you look at the aromatic section, this has changed dramatically because I have one fewer hydrogen. I have a hydrogen now that's isolated, that's on its own, that's gonna be this guy. I have that hydrogen still near the carbonyl group. We know that's gonna be this one out here at 7.9. And then I have another one near chlorine, which has been shifted to the right by that chlorine, and that is now over closer to 7.0. A lot of fun you can have with this. If you want to look at integration, there's a button right down here for integration. And if you want to print, I think this will work. Let's see what happens. There it is. We got a uh, PDF download that shows exactly what was on our screen, and we can use that for exams or whatever we're interested in doing uh, to, uh, to, dis to uh, use the actual pictures in other works. All right, so that's the proton NMR spectrum. And then we have another one that does proton and carbon. So this page is the same as the previous one, pretty much. I'll just draw a super simple compound here maybe phenol, and now it's going to go, and if it all works properly, we should see both a proton spectrum, and then uh, in a minute, the C13 is gonna come, and then they're gonna be put together. So now we have both the proton spectrum here and the carbon spectrum here. And again, if you click on lines, it'll tell you which carbons we're looking at. Who's this down here? Oh, it's gonna be on the oxygen, right? And then, uh, if we click here, we're seeing the hydrogens that are involved in those signals. So uh, proton and carbon are both available through this system. Okay, how are we doing here? Uh, number six. Okay, so that those were the relatively simple pages that were put together. I'm going to show you three examples of sites that people have spent a considerable energy putting together, uh, making some very sophisticated sites that you can use for all sorts of different reasons, uh, purposes. I'm not gonna go through these in a huge amount of detail because they're just so complex, but I wanna just point out that they uh, can be used uh, in many, many ways. And just looking through this, you see how many, many, different aspects of this uh, there are. Uh, I have not even explored all of this, uh, but there's some interesting things you can do in terms of, you can even put two molecules up and then compare them. And this says, well, these two are constitutional isomers because why? They look the same. No, the oxygen is in, two different, in a different place. So that makes them a constitutional isomer. So we can talk about enantiomers and constitutional isomers, and it's really whatever you happen to have put together here, you can, it's a model kit. So it's very easy to change these models and uh, just lots and lots and lots of interesting possibilities for that, which I'm pretty much gonna let you explore yourself and uh, not talk 
so much about. I'd rather you take uh, ex explore this in a breakout room and, and see what you can do with it. See if there's something that would be valuable there for you. Okay. Another fantastic site that's out there is uh, from the University of Liverpool in the UK. Uh, a friend of mine, Nick Greaves, has uh, specialized this site in terms of organic reactions. And pretty much he has a discussion of, I think, any re organic reaction mechanism that you would ever encounter in education. Uh, this has been developed over many years at Liverpool, and it's just a fantastic site. Um, I'm going to go to the organic, and you can see here the sorts of different mechanisms that are available, nucleophilic additions, substitution, carbonyl groups, stereochemistry, eliminations. Wow, what is not in here? I think everything is in here. Uh, if we just go down to that first topic we tend to talk about in organic chemistry, nucleophilic substitution, um, we go to a page, here's our, our JMOL again, it's set up, it's 3D, we can see what's going on here. It's going to be the chloride, uh, methyl chloride here with a bromide ion doing the displacement. Well, we all know that's a pretty good challenge to explain to students and these little two-dimensional drawings don't really do the job to, for introductory students to explain. And this is very hard to do with an actual plastic model because we have transition states. Now I wanna show you, so the basic idea here is that you click on the arrow and you'll see the reaction happen. In all of these pages, that's the idea. We can go to the starting material. We can go to the product and we could also see the reaction. But it's not just that because I would encourage you to open this little controls box, which pops up some nice little controls that let us uh, do very specific things. Let's see, we can go to the first frame we can step through this slowly. We can get to the transition state, roll around, show students that, ah, check this out. It's becoming planar right there with that carbon and the three hydrogens. And we keep going through the reaction and there's the inversion. It's now inverted. So this is just one example of many, many, many reactions that are on this website uh, that have discussions. And uh, see if I can find one here. Many of them have uh, molecular orbitals that are associated with them. So I know last week there were some uh, people present who were very much interested in the molecular orbital business. And in fact, um, this site does some of that. But I want to show you one last site. Uh, our eighth one that I want to show you is a site that's specifically about molecular orbitals. If you have an interest in molecular orbitals, I would highly recommend this site. Now it's in French and uh, uh, we might, uh, uh, these are all automated Googleized uh, translations. So don't expect perfection, but that might be helpful to a certain extent. Um, I'm gonna do it in English because my Hindi is not that good. And so my point uh, is this top one is the one to go to molecular orbital databases. And if you look here, it looks very fancy, uh, but really it's a, it's a very, uh, there's just a very few things that you need to know. First of all, there's a list over here of various compounds, all right? and uh, the molecular orbitals. Now, there's a list of molecular orbitals, and I want to point out where this is. It's right here where it says properties, and you click on this button right here, and now we have that classic table, uh, the, the orbital diagram with the energies, and you can see we're at the HOMO in this case, but if we go up one, we're going to be at the LUMO, and uh, various other field states might be of interest.
as well. Just click on where the electrons are and you can pick up all the different orbitals that are in that system. So I think uh, really that that covers a lot of territory in the area of uh, molecular orbitals. Okay, so that was my introduction to these various websites. And I'm hoping that you will now be interested in joining one of the breakout rooms that we have for you. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna take about 30 minutes for those. It's a long time, but it, the idea is that um, you can experiment some and be talking with some peers, getting to know a few other people uh, on the, in these various rooms. And we have two rooms for each of the different um, uh, uh, websites. I don't know that we really need to use both rooms, Nailata. We have 186 people, eight rooms that would be well, we could. Anyway, there's an A and a B room. If it looks like there's a lot of people in one and you want to have a fewer people to talk with, or we don't know how this is going to turn out. We just thought it'd be interesting mm -hmm. to, to let you have it at it. And there is a link. Say a lot of have we got in the chat the links that they need yet? No, I would do that. So thank you, Professor Hansen. Those uh, websites were very useful. Uh, actually, before we uh, allow them to enter the breakout rooms, I would like to um, uh, give them uh, just some instructions on how to go about it. So can I share my screen and show them a few, a few slides on this? So that would be useful for them. Yeah. So I'll start sharing. Yeah. So here. Uh, so Professor Hansen uh, discussed about these eight uh, uh, topics and each topic has a website. So these websites uh, are already shared with you in the tentative schedule link that we gave you along with the guideline email. So if you can open your guideline email where you found the link for the meeting link and other links, uh, you will find a tentative schedule, uh, meeting schedule link. So if you click on that, uh, and scroll down, you will see the links uh, for all these. We have shared all these links. Uh, and I have so just put them, them in the chat as well. OK, yeah, Professor Hansen. I mean, we can uh, time to time, we'll share them in the chat also. Yeah. So each uh, of these topics, the eight topics, we have two rooms uh, per topic. So that, uh, I mean, like uh, we want to keep the number uh, less in each room so that the discussions can be uh, more fruitful. Uh, one of you can, one of the members of these uh, breakout rooms can share the screen and uh, with the website and then start discussing uh, the, the examples and whatever you would like to discuss. So all these topics, we have labeled them uh, 1A, 1B. You can choose any one of the room and you can actually uh, I'll share some more information. So interested participants can choose the breakout room depending on the topic of interest. Uh, and once in the room, you can switch among the rooms. Suppose if you enter a room, uh, I mean, you want to change it to some other topic, you can exit the room and enter another room. Uh, the list uh, is will be displayed uh, in your breakout room uh, panel in the bottom of your screen. I have to enable that, then you will be able to see that. In a few minutes, I'll enable the breakout rooms so that you will be able to see. So the breakout room duration time is 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, automatically you will be, uh, you know, you can get into the main uh, meeting room or in between also you can change rooms. Uh, so, but the maximum duration is, the time limit is 30 minutes. And there are eight topics to choose, as I've already discussed, and they are named as same as the topics listed. So each topic has two rooms and total of 16 rooms. So uh, participants in each breakout room are encouraged to share, uh, share the screen, explore and discuss the topic. All links for the topics are given in the tentative uh, schedule link, which is in your email. So we'll also share the links in the chat window. So at the end of the breakout session, participants will join the main meeting room and further discussion and interaction with uh, Professor Hansen. So 
how to enter the breakout room uh, i will enable uh, in a, a few seconds and you will find the breakout rooms at the bottom if if you have maximized your screen they'll they'll be looking like they it will be written breakout rooms uh, the panel will be shown at the bottom of your screen uh, otherwise uh, they are collapsed into the more the three uh, the three dots you see and uh, more the link you click on that and then there you will find the breakout rooms uh, option there you click on it and then you can choose to join any one of the rooms uh, so with that i'll stop sharing actually i'll just enable in front of you the uh, breakout rooms so i'll check the settings first so i'll allow the participants to choose the room and uh, you will be automatically uh, you know you can it will close after 30 minutes and i'll open all the rooms yeah yeah so i have opened all the rooms so i hope you can all uh, see that now looks like they're going into rooms so that's they're going into the rooms okay yeah, yeah fine fantastic yeah i can see the participants reducing in the main meeting room so that means they are choosing the rooms that's good okay so i think uh, we are all uh, uh, how did you feel how did you oh, all gosh. like the breakout rooms participants it was very all, nice ma'am we are all in the main room now professor hansen excellent excellent it was a wonderful very idea. interesting excellent ma'am excellent so you could all uh, you know discuss and then uh, come up with something like uh, new models or something useful for your teaching So, so the floor is open. Yes, ma'am. We need just a practice. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, actually, yeah. Professor Hansen is there. Floor is open yeah, for give discussion. Me a, give me a give me a second to say a few things, and then we'll yes, we'll yes. open it all up. Absolutely. Uh, I, I hope you found that useful and not too frustrating. Um, it's it's always a challenge to figure out how to make all these things work, and we didn't give you a lot of instructions, uh, and and they're not always self-explanatory. But I hope you got an idea. and i hope to, i also want to point out that this was just eight sites among hundreds that if you go look for you can find and and uh, many of you probably know sites that i don't know uh that that are you're already using in your classroom and that's terrific uh we want to leave some time now for just discussion so if you raise your hand uh using the hand raising uh reaction down there at the bottom of your zoom uh or to to whatever level is possible just speak up and 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 suggest something that we want you want to talk about that would be great um you can put some comments in the chat and Stanislava will be looking through those and picking out comments uh that she'll she'll introduce and I'm here now for however long we want to be here to answer some questions Professor Hansen, there is one Mole Kumar Chetopadhyay who raised hands. So I am going to, yeah, he is going to talk. Yes, go ahead. Good, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, actually, I joined uh, room one uh, where confirmational uh, analysis for uh, butane were mm -hmm. shown. Uh, we have understood that, uh, but I wanted to switch off to uh, the simple molecule like ethane. so ah. i i could not uh, i tried my level best and i asked it's, other it's participants a, and, yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, it's so, a very really, simple yes. page <laughs> that page only does butane wouldn't yeah. it be nice to have a page that you could change yes. the molecule and do it again yeah, so it was uh, very interesting have that page yeah. so uh on the other hand uh If there's a group of people who want to build a page that has okay. ethane and butane and a few other things, you could do that. Thanks. With a little help. Oh, thank you. That's a good. That would be a good project for some students to do. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Sure. Thank you. 
Sharda. Sharda, yes. I recognize yeah. this <laughs> face. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, Professor Hansen. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, I have uh, two quick questions. Uh, I have been to the uh, NMR Spectrum Predictor uh, room. Uh, I uh, used your link to go there. Uh, I could see that it doesn't predict the labile protons. Uh, so, uh, do you uh, can you suggest another simulator where we can see the uh, labile protons also? Ah, you mean the ones that are on O8, like O8 and O8. Yeah. No prediction shows those. So, no, I can't. Uh, the you have to just accept that those could be just about anywhere in the spectrum. They're they're concentration dependent. They're solvent dependent. Depending on the concentration that's spectrum. Yeah. So so it's not set up to be able to estimate. The calculations themselves are not set up to estimate anything for labile protons. Okay, sir. And one more thing, sir. Uh, can you suggest a similar uh, predictor for UV and IR? Uh, oh, no such predictor exists. Uh, the only data we have are for, uh, the NMR. for NMR. The calculations are only for NMR. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, sir, actually, last time when we had the workshops, Neelata Ma'am had asked our suggestions for having a workshop on uh, how to use, because I found it very difficult to understand how, how to, you know, go about mm -hmm. whatever was being shown. I was actually switching from one room to the other because to mm -hmm. attain clarity on exactly how to go about it. So if we could have a workshop on it anytime, two days, whatever. That's a um, very good suggestion. Yeah. And and the we other can. thing is that um, it, it's it would be possible to maybe write some tutorials, but we haven't done that to help just explain the pages. You're absolutely yeah. right, though. Yeah, it's, I would just, it's, uh, it was it's not, not obvious easy. how to use these. Yeah. <laughs> What pages were you particularly interested in learning how to use? I like the N2 orbital diagram. I went through that uh, page, the chem tube page. And I mm. also saw actually, uh, we did our post-graduation long back. So the spectrum part was, I was finding it a little difficult to come back to because I teach 11th and 12th and it's been ages mm. since we actually visited that site. Yeah. So yeah. that was a little difficult, but we could understand, but how to go about it was not uh, actually I, I, it was difficult uh -huh. yeah somebody I was doing that. it so i was like following it but i don't think mm -hmm. i could have done it by myself uh-huh probably give it to a smart student and they'll figure it all out yeah i think i'll have to do that you can learn from your students they they're so good at this kind of yeah thing. <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah actually we can plan for a two-day workshop or a uh, we'll send out a Google form so that you can fill up and then uh, you can uh, actually give us a tentative time when you are, when you want to have these workshops, actually, because as teachers, you are always busy. So we have to plan this. Yeah. So yeah, we will. Actually, uh, when we came to know about this, we were quite excited about the whole thing. So whenever you send some link out, I think we'll join. <laughs> definitely yeah. weekends so, weekends preferably of course but otherwise also we'll surely actually take time. Uh, professor hansen uh, is in uh, uh, us so he's located in us so uh, getting to you know involve uh, him in this uh, will be a challenge because of the time difference so we should well, uh, meet at odd times you know for us actually well, we could, you know, Snellata, we could we could pick a few of these and just let people know there's going to be an online session for this particular one, and and exactly. it would we be a smaller that. group, uh, small you know. But group. even if it's a few people who want to learn, that that might be fun. And maybe, yeah, like a weekend, like when Professor Hansen is not teaching and he has, uh, he's a bit free, so then I, we can. I can't <laughs> I can't do an all day from here because for me that's all night. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I'm telling the <laughs> teachers that it's difficult. So we can have sometimes the evening time, like uh, two, three hours, like, for example, 
it should not be too inconvenient to Professor Hansen. So uh, somewhat like a Saturday uh, Indian time, five o'clock to eight o'clock or something like that. So, I mean, we, we can discuss more on this. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Um, may I give one suggestion? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Can we take uh, like one or two um, uh, topics, like one or two uh, apps which are being uh, shared with us? So that will be easier for us to grasp whatever is being explained on the breakup rooms or otherwise also. Because there were, today there were too many and we were so enthusiastic about you no know, to go and try to all of them to get all together so that is what i was just thinking actually this was a trial so we want to know the pulse of you like which topics you like because they may you may be liking nmr but somebody else may like zero chemistry some other uh, teacher may like uh, uh, reaction mechanism some others may like or orbital so we don't know which two to choose from so that's why we gave all the eight it's very difficult to choose uh, like we can't take a decision so <laughs> now we saw that there were many people in chem tube 3d and uh, uh, maybe the 2d to 3d uh, breakout rooms that's what so maybe we can choose actually ma'am related to 11th and 12th curriculum will be encouraging for us uh, oh, yeah, that's sure. why we were in yeah. the chem too. Well, and and now now we would encourage you to let us know what what particularly now you've seen this, what particularly in class eleven and twelve could you use something like this, even if you didn't see it? Does that make sense? So chem tube is good. One thing is that MOT uh, is uh, based on MOT. There is a, a, a certain app so that is also good molecular orbital theory. And NMR we do not teach in um, class 11, 10, 12. I agree. Right. Yeah. Yes. So we can make group the teachers who are teaching uh, grads and post grad level. We can group them uh, separately, and the teachers who are teaching mm -hmm. school level, we can group them in a different Certain. group. Absolutely, we'll do that next time. Please uh, uh, bring this up in the feedback form because we have given you the link uh, to the feedback form. So if you can fill up uh, the feedback form, there is a, a, a particular question where you can write about your views on this and then what you want to do in the future. So you can, uh, uh, we will consolidate all of them and then we can get back to you. Sure, thank you, thank you. Yes, Nilata, it, it uh, occurs to me that we could have a, a relative, not too long, uh, Zoom session with some um, class 11, class 12 teachers, Absolutely. just to talk yeah. about what are the key ones that you'd like to see that could really help you. Exactly. Uh, and then, can have and then do it sometime later. Yeah, that would so, be great. And anything yeah. you can get in the feedback forms about that would be very much appreciated. Absolutely. The feedback form is the one uh, to check your pulse, actually, all of you. So if uh, you fill up the feedback form and submit, then you know exactly what you want. So it will be great if you can all do that. Ma'am, the NCRT yes. curriculum, preferably yes. the NCRT. Yeah, actually, Professor Hansen downloaded all the books of the NCRT uh, from the website, and then he actually aligned this talk um, uh, with that uh, examples. Okay, so he knows yeah, about as much the as I NCRT, can. NCRT, uh, yeah. Understanding that there's there's just <laughs> yes. a lot that uh, I, I, you know we understand that. Well, uh, there many of the people in this are are not just uh, 11, 12. We have some in some university yeah, yeah, some and some students, students here yeah. uh, as well. And so we wanted to make sure that we we had the full range, uh, but we could do something that would be specific to 11, 12 for sure in the future yeah. or university in the future as well. I mean, this, this is kind of fun. I'm enjoying this. So we can do more. Yeah. Um, um, one request from me that, if we create some WhatsApp group with these participants, ma'am, then time to time, if you have any clarification, you may ask through that WhatsApp group, ma'am. Is it possible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Somebody has to take the initiative, actually, to do that, yeah. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma because we yes. have a number of clarifications when we have, when we are, when we are giving lecture, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it will be great if you can uh, uh, you know, form a group 
and uh, you can email uh, then i can join actually you know that <laughs> okay okay, <laughs> okay. No problem at all. you have to just email me that okay you have formed the group and uh, certainly i can join yeah you can send me the link yeah. of the whatsapp group uh, the link i can join that's no problem at all that yeah, will be okay. helpful and someone has put the link for the feedback form this feedback form actually is uh, created have already filled it uh, particular user so it will not work like uh, it, it's a link to a particular name and your registration so it's not common to all so if you put up the link here uh, other user cannot use it like for example puna ma'am has put but that feedback form is only for the Poonam ma'am, uh, not for others, okay? So please go to your email and click on the particular link uh, which is sent to you, okay? Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, more questions? We have time. Ma'am, actually, uh, I have one question, ma'am. Yes. Uh, sir, actually, the uh, uh, Mandalay periodic table was published in the year of 1905, sir. Okay. And that time the subatomic particles have not discovered. Yeah. Um, but he has taken the atomic weight and based on that atomic weight and correlating with the properties, he has come, he has fixed the, uh, uh, placed the elements. So how uh, he got the atomic weight for uh, those elements? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to answer. I, that, that's my only answer to that one. It, guy was pretty smart, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how they did that. <laughs> okay, sir. Yeah. How did they do that? Yeah. I think it's all by like combining weights. They knew that uh, a certain number of grams of carbon combined with a certain number of grams of oxygen, and they had very good scales, very precise mass measurements they could make, and worked it all out by these ratios that they were doing, I think. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. So that... Uh... We may not know, but uh, there, there may be others uh, in the group. Maybe you 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 can find the forums uh, where you can post such questions, and then you may get a very interesting answers. Actually, there out there there are many websites which take these questions. Yeah. If if people have questions about specific, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Websites for, that for we today. just looked at. Feel yeah. free to ask because I can share my screen and show a few more things. We have time yeah, to have time. kind of go over these and 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 do them a little and, bit more detail. If anybody yeah. wants to do that, just say yeah. so. Sir, if you if those can be displayed, we can take a screenshot because we've forgotten a few of them. The links. Uh, yeah, those uh, the rooms which the breakout rooms. If the you know. The complete table, if you could take a screenshot. Oh, you mean of, of the list of all of Yeah, the, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, it should be somewhere in your chat. Um, let me see if I can see it in mine. I, I can send it again. The mail. Here. But you mean you mean the links? The links, you yeah, can find it in your room. email. The breakout room. Email, email. There. Yeah, I put yeah. them in the chat just now. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, it's there. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there. It's there. If you can just take the screenshot. Yeah. Or, uh, ma'am, actually, clickable links are there in your email, ma'am. If you open your email, if you open the tentative uh, schedule, okay, you uh, can all find these the links, links are there. available there. Absolutely, all these mm -hmm. links have been sent to each and every participant, actually, registrant. Whoever registered and, will get these links. Yeah. And will also be in the mail. Uh, sent yeah, I can share my screen and then show where exactly they are. Can I share my screen? Ma'am, yes, it's in the mail tentative schedule. Exactly. It's in the mail tentative yeah, schedule. It, it's written the tentative schedule. Yes, there yes. are links. Okay. Scroll okay, down your mail. Yeah. A little bit Scroll lower down. on the schedule. Yeah, it, it's, it's a little bit lower. Scroll down your mail, go to the end, you will find. Them. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Teachers, uh, do you want Professor Hansen to go through any of these uh, websites again, like with few more examples or few more details? We have time. So he Plenty can do that. Yeah, we have a lot of time. Yeah. Another 20 minutes are there. So if you, any one of you want to... ChemTube 3D. ChemTube Chem 3D. 3D. Fine. Right. Yeah, okay. Sure, I'd love to do that. Yep. That's an excellent website, actually. It has everything you need. <laughs> um, That's the one. 
Nilata ma'am. Um, yes. Good yes. evening Hanson sir. Sir yes, I was talking about 3D chemistry only. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. only I was telling you. All right. Yeah, on. he can show some yeah. Yeah. I'll get there in a second myself. Yeah. Okay, and then and then I'll, I'll share my screen, but I'll, I'll keep keep those mics open so we can talk a little bit exactly, as yeah. we do this. I don't want to give a presentation. I want you to tell me what what exactly. you'd like me to do now. Yeah. So, um, I'll go to the organic. Actually, I haven't, I haven't looked at yeah. the inorganic. Oh my goodness, there's there's actually a lot of inorganic here too now, but organic. <laughs> yeah. What what of this would you like me to take a look at? Yeah. Uh, Jama. Serial uh, chemistry. Serial chemistry again. Mm, okay. A lot of interesting things. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Which ones here? There is a list. Chiral, chiral, chiral molecules. Chiral molecules. This one, RNS. Okay. So in this case, there really isn't, okay, so if we click here, it's just kind of lining up. Ah, so this isn't really a reaction, is it? It's just different views of the molecule that they're showing here. I sir, to explain chiral and achiral. Yeah, there is another link for chiral and achiral. Uh, Professor Hansen, you can uh, go back and then select chiral and achiral. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Chiral or, or yeah, achiral. Yes, yes, that's so all. This that's all. maybe is a little bit that's of a quiz all. or something. Yeah, it's a quiz. Hmm. Is the molecule chiral or achiral? Yes. And what we're looking for is that plane of symmetry. Yep. Through there. Excuse me, sir. Mm hmm. Uh, even for solid state, we can take packaging efficiency and everything we can take from this uh, chem tube 3D. Very nice uh, packaging, hexagonal, and everything is given. Oh, it's a terrific that, site. There. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's. Yeah. I think this one is like, uh, it covers everything. Actually, ma'am. Actually, because <laughs> while taking online classes, I was just telling sir about uh, this app only. That many... Yeah. Things, been in this app that is ChemTube 3D, and uh, we were used. And it's actually helpful for us. This terrific. is it's terrific. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, I think this class. Yeah, they they have really done a beautiful job on this website. Okay. And, yeah. uh, um. Now, uh, let's see. So, let me show something that I forgot to say before. Um, this JMOL, this applet here, JSMOL, actually is way more powerful than just this. And so, for example, if I right click right now, I get a menu. And the menu lets me do lots of things that the web page might not have a button for. So, in this, uh, Can we take an easier example? Uh, well, um, I mean, this is just this is just this is just for any molecule. I'm just uh, pointing out that if you wanted to, uh, I don't know that you really want to color, but uh, there you can label. Let's see what happens here. Uh, hang on a minute. Actually, I don't use this menu very much. Um, but there are various options. Set picking label, what happens here? So now I, I, I've set it so that it's, it's telling me sort of which atom, what the, this oxygen and this nitrogen is making little labels there. And that's something that JMOL does. But the person who wrote the website didn't particularly feel they needed to have. Just things like that. Um, I think, for example, here we might be able to get the molecular electrostatic potential under 
surfaces. Whoops. Surfaces. Um, we can get a Van der Waals surface. Oh, under that particular atom, I guess, because I clicked it. Uh, select all and then uh, surfaces, Van der Waals surface, solvent, molecular surface. Here's our molecular, molecular electrostatic potential. Let's see what happens now. There. So even, even at this website, we can do a few things that it doesn't, it, it wasn't actually written to do. Does that make sense? Anyway, uh, this is this site or other discussion. Um, someone was saying, is that under uh, the inorganic? Is that where you saw the discussion of simple solids here like this? Is this it? Yes, somebody was saying about the solid. Packing, yeah. packing yes, somebody solid. said. Solid yes, state yes, packing. Solid yeah, state. Simple pack. Oh, yeah, this is really nice. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yes. Yeah. Even the okay, now let's see what he has. Tetrahedral voids and octahedral voids, that also we can, uh, you know, easily uh, find out and easily explain to students. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's it's got some really nice unit cells also. Right. So there's a little tetrahedral unit, and you can mm -hmm. see the hole there. Here's where there's this a hole. One's the very good, sir. Of and so 3D, 3D packaging also. <laughs> ABA layer, ABAC layer, everything we can explain. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, this yeah. is terrific. <laughs> this really is terrific. It's See? Amazing. You I told you, sir. <laughs> I didn't even know about this. This one's yeah, very good. Cool. We didn't explore much, uh, I mean, a lot here, but... This uh, is exciting. Actually, we don't have time much. No? Otherwise, we could have seen all. Well, you'll have to explore on your own. That's yes, how it yes, works. Yes, that's the whole uh, whole thing that we introduced you. It's it's it's, it's a 5% of the thing or less than that. Uh, you have to do the rest of the 95%, yeah. Right, <laughs> right. We just get you get you interested here yeah and there are uh, if uh, anybody is teaching organic chemistry at a higher level like a pg level or uh, higher then there are a lot of name reactions which are listed in this uh, uh, website like the deal yeah, right. reaction yeah it's so so their a level yeah. the a level in the uk would be something like the 11 12 in india i think hmm. that would be their de their 12 a level, I think, yeah. would be the level 12. And the university oh undergraduate level, yeah. They may he be has the done a marvelous job here. Oh, he's got a little NMR. Let's see what they've got for NMR. NMR equivalent protons. Okay, so he's he's got some very specific molecules that uh, it's not really interactive like the other one was, but it's using the same kind of information. Click on the 2D and the colored spectrum to view the respective 3D models. I thought I was doing that. I'm not seeing any change up there, but okay. Oh, maybe here. No, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Do you teach anything about polymers in a class of 11 and 12? Yes, sir, we have polymers. polymers. Yes, yes. We have in 12. Yes, 12 and That's kind of cool. Great. Showing that, showing that wow. repeating pattern there. Nylon success. Yeah. Mm. I'm sure Another, there's... Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sure there are nanoparticles listed. I, I couldn't catch what you said, Snailata. Okay, I was saying... Uh, 
there, there may be some nanoparticles or nanotubes listed here in this chem tube 3D. You think no. so? I don't see it. You don't see? Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Well, so, we're probably almost at the time limit. Almost at the time. I'll stop exactly. sharing. We have to conclude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, any more questions? Because uh, then uh, our colleague uh, from Fossi, Yash Vora, is here, so he can talk about uh, you know Fossi a little bit. The, he'll manage actually the all of the uh, the Facebook, uh, the social media, and he's here to give a, a vote of thanks. So. Uh, if you have questions before that, you can ask. Otherwise, after the vote of thanks, uh, we cannot, uh, you know, we have to just conclude the session. We have to leave. We cannot ask any questions. So, uh, any more questions from the teachers? Yeah. So, please do contact us for uh, further, uh, if you need further Zoom meetings with Professor Hansen, particular small group with a very specific topics, or if you want uh, to attend uh, more workshops. Yeah, we can all arrange that. Yeah, if you're interested, you please mention that in the feedback form. We'll get back to you. So if there are no more questions, uh, Yash, yes, uh, over yes. to you. Yeah, over to you for the social media links information and for the vote of thanks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Ahead, Yes, yes, absolutely. You're visible also. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, thank you. I mean, uh, I guess I, I saw the feedback uh, in the chat. So, uh, I guess the participants and all the professors were very uh, excited and enthusiastic. So, uh, we would like to thank uh, Professor Hansen for arranging and for, you know, conducting such a wonderful session for all the faculty members and participants. And uh, as Dr. Sneha Lata has already mentioned that uh, there would be sessions in the future as well. You can just drop down and, and drop an email to us and uh, we can conduct that. So I've just uh, shared the social media handles of uh, Project Fossi in the chat box. I can I can just reshare that maybe once because I guess the messages were scrolled. Uh, and yeah. So just shared that. Uh, so all all the activities, you know, foresee apart from um, th this was just you know one of the sessions that you have attended. We conduct many workshops and um, uh, many you know other interesting things for the students and for faculty members. Like we we do conduct faculty development programs or internships and uh, workshops and many other things. So you know, for for example, recently we had uh, conducted a. Uh, conducted a semester long, you know, uh, for the summer fellowship during the summer break for the students. And uh, it is generally for a period of around six to eight weeks. And since there are some restrictions, so we are conducting it off uh, online now, like virtually, but uh, else till to, before, before the pandemic, we used to do it uh, in the campus. So students used to get, you know, a personal experience of working in the campus under the guidance of the mentors, the professors of IIT Bombay. So, uh, we also had a job fair and some some events with uh, uh, you know isro and so on and we are we are now coming up uh, with other like we have a python workshop which is uh, being starting which is starting from uh, tomorrow day after tomorrow we have a two days hands on sessions on uh, python and django for all the students and faculty members so whosoever is willing to attend they can and uh, we are, we are coming up now with the animation based hackathon so that is also going to be very exciting and we, we recent i mean it is it is ongoing the uh, it, it, for electronics people um, if you were interested you know in circuit designing and simulation then we have we have it's an ongoing uh, hackathon um, you can you can just follow our social media handles once you'll get all the details so there are multiple activities which we do which are upcoming as well so please do follow um, uh, social uh, social media handles and uh, a special thanks to Dr. Snehalata and her team for arranging such a wonderful session. And this is, this, I guess, the part two. So, yeah, and, and the website, uh, the email address has been mentioned. If you have any doubts, contact hyphen soul. 
so the entire team of uh, project soul under who have worked under under the mentorship or guidance of dr sneha datta we would like to thank them uh, we would like also like to thank uh, professor kannan mautdalia who is the pi of this project and a special thanks to our funding agency so these projects are uh, completely uh, funded by the ministry of education government of india so a special thanks to our funding agency dr sneha datta and her team and of course professor hansen for arranging and for conducting such an such a wonderful session for all the participants so if you have any doubts you can let us know else sneha uh, lata ma'am if you have anything you can else we can wind up yeah th- thank you yes thank you so much thank you uh, yeah. for your words uh, and also describing uh, you know lot of um, you know activities of the fossi uh, so i hope all the teachers here uh, you know uh will make use of whatever is uh, discussed today so thank you thank you professor hansen have a nice day thank you thank early you. morning for you uh, and thank you all for participating thank yeah thank you all for participating you were excellent all the teachers very good okay yeah thank you so much bye bye and see you next time thank yeah you. bye thank you everyone thank you bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. yeah thank you sir thank you everyone thank you yeah